worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Glory, glory, alleluia. Glory, alleluia. Glory, alleluia. Praise the Lord, worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Glory, glory, alleluia. Glory, alleluia. Glory, alleluia. Praise the Lord. Worthy, worthy, worthy is our Lamb. Worthy, worthy is our Lamb. Worthy, worthy is our Lamb. That was slain. Glory, glory, alleluia. Glory, alleluia. Glory, alleluia. Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus. We really, really want to thank you once again for what you did for us at Calvary. Thank you for the crown of thorns. Thank you for the stripes. Thank you for the blood that you shed. Thank you for everything you purchased for us at Calvary. Father, please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight again, Lord, we are gathered together to dine with you. Thank you for the privilege. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, because we know that through this sacred meal, mighty miracles can occur. And we are praying that tonight, in the lives of all those who will be participating, everything that can be ours through the Holy Communion, Please release to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. We'll be, please be seated. We'll be looking at Second Kings, chapter four. We'll be reading from verse 38 to 41. Second Kings chapter 4. Reading from verse 38 to 41. And Elisha came again to Gilgal, and there was a death in the land. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said unto his servant, Set on the great pot, and seed pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wide vine, and gathered thereof wide girls, his laps full, and came and shred them into the pot of pottage for they knew them not. So they poured out for the men to eat. And it came to pass, as they were eating of the pottage, that they cried out and said, O thou man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat thereof. But he said, Then bring me meal, and he cast it into the pot, and he said, Pour out for the people. 
that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. It's one of the very interesting stories that we find in the scriptures um, that will support the saying that a man is what he eats. In other words, food can kill if it is poisonous and as we see in this story an antidote can neutralize the poison in other words what goes into you could terminate your life if it is poison and if it is discovered early enough that you have eaten poison and the correct antidote is given the poison can be neutralized which explains to us what the doctors try to do desperately when someone is sick they try to introduce it to your system what they believe could reverse the effect of the sickness or disease. In this story, we found that the sons of the prophets, as they were called, were about to eat. It was genuine food. Somebody accidentally had added poison. And when the people tasted the food, they didn't say there is poison in the food. They said death is in the food or in the pot. I'm praying that as you partake of the Holy Communion tonight, any form of poison that have been introduced into your system, whether physically or spiritually. Things you ate that you should not have eaten, whether during the day or in a dream. I pray in the name that's above every other name that every one of them will be neutralized today. Because the very best of antidotes you could ever find is the body of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, from verse 23 to 24, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 24, when he took the bread and broke it, he said, this is my body broken for you. My body turned to pieces for you so that as you eat it, whatever is not of God in you can be neutralized. Which will help you understand clearly First Peter chapter 2 verse 24 1 Peter 2 24 that says, by his stripes we were healed. It was his stripes that broke his body to pieces to bring healing. We're not saying that the bread we're eating during Holy Communion will suddenly change to flesh. No. But he himself said, Take this bread. It represents my body broken for you. He took the bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and then said, take it. You probably understand better 
what he meant when he said in Matthew chapter 15, verse 13. Matthew 15, verse 13. When he said, every plant my father has not planted shall be rooted up. What's he saying? As we partake of the Holy Communion, as we take his body, the body will go to the root of your sickness and disease. It will go into your system and find anything that was not put there by God and root it up. It goes to the very root. You see, because when God created man, he did not create sickness with man. As a matter of fact, if you read Genesis chapter 1 from verse 25 to 31, Genesis 1 from verse 25 to 31, you could read the whole story from the beginning. You will find that as God was creating things, he kept on saying, and he saw what he had done, that it was good. He saw everything that he had done, and it was good. But when he created man, he said, he looked at what he had done, and behold, it was very good. Now, God doesn't waste words. In other words, he looked at man and saw a very perfect creation. Very good. That's why David said in Psalm 139, verse 14, Psalm 139, verse 14, he said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. There's nothing wonderful in sickness. Nothing wonderful in disease. And so when you eat the bread, by faith you are eating an antidote for everything that was not in you when God created you. And such things... The plants that my father did not plant shall be rooted up tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, it will interest you to know that there are some sicknesses and diseases that are purely demonic. Now, all sickness, all disease come from the devil. There's no sickness in heaven. No disease in heaven. But if you read Matthew chapter 12, verse 22, Matthew 12, verse 22, the Bible tells us that they brought a man to Jesus who was demonized. And as a result of being demonized, he was blind and dumb. It was a demon in him, responsible for the problem. As soon as Jesus cast out the demon, the blind and dumb man <laughs> suddenly began to speak and suddenly began to see. That's why you find that when in some cases some people go to the hospital, and they are sick. They know they are sick. But they carry out every test. And everything appears normal. Everything appears normal. Why? Because demons don't appear on x-ray. Because they have no blood, they have no bones. They are spirit beings. 
You can't detect them with ultrasound or whatever sound because they're purely demonic. And this is where the blood of Jesus Christ comes in. Why? You will not just eat the bread, you will drink the wine, which is symbolic of his blood. Because in Revelation chapter 12, from verse 10 to 11, Revelation 12, from verse 10 to 11, the Bible says, they overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb. So when you eat the bread, if the sickness or disease is something uh, organic or biological in nature, you've taken the antidote and the sickness will be uprooted. If the sickness is demonic in nature, the blood will finish the job. And I will remind some of us, some of us who were there when these testimonies were being shared, maybe one or two testimonies will be enough. A woman was sick, all manners of things crawling inside her body, and uh, they've tried everything, and nothing worked. They've done all manners of tests, they saw nothing wrong. And the daughter was going to bring this woman to the Holy Ghost service for prayers. And to be sure that traffic jam or anything won't stop them, she decided to bring the mother on Thursday night, which happened to be when we have Holy Communion. So Mama partook of the Holy Communion. When the service was over, Mama went to sit in the car while the daughter was attending to one or two people. When she finished, according to the testimony they shared, she went to Mama in the car, and when she opened the door of the car, she found that at the feet of Mama, several dead soldier ants. So she thought, oh, I packed among soldier ants, so she looked out, and there was not a single soldier ant. And my man needed no prayer by the following day because he was completely whole. Every demonic force in any of you, as you partake of the communion tonight, they shall be pushed out in Jesus' name. Amen. But I'll give you another example, another testimony. Mm, all these things are on record. This one happened during one of the conventions in America. And this lady came to the convention and said in her testimony that there was a demon in her that speaks like a man. Some of you will remember. The demon will be saying blasphemous things. She's done everything, gone to some deliverance ministers, etc., etc. Et Finally, she heard of the convention and came. And then the Holy Communion time came. And she heard me say, God inspired me through the Holy Spirit to keep on saying, the wine, which represents the blood of Jesus Christ, is poison to demons. She said, the moment she had that wine, the demon in her, speaking with the voice of a man, said, you dare not drink that wine. And she said, she was filled with joy because she knew, ah, victory at last. Of course, she ate the bread and drank the wine and she never heard from the demon again. 
if there's any demon that has been speaking to you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, as you drink the wine tonight, you will never hear from that demon again. Amen. Now, so the only communion is such a secret meal that we need to know how do we take it? When do we take it? Because if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and you can read it from verse 27 to 30. 1 Corinthians 11, 27 to 30. It says you must eat it worthily. He said, if you eat it worthily, it will be wonderful. You eat it unworthily, it can become poison. He said, because some people who ate it unworthily, they became sick. Some people ate it unworthily and they even died. He used the word sleep. But the word sleep there means death. When are we supposed to to eat the Holy Communion. It is interesting that it is written clearly the Lord's Supper. It didn't say the Lord's meal. It says specifically the Lord's Supper, not the Lord's breakfast, not the Lord's lunch, but the Lord's Supper. And supper is eaten at night. Best after sundown. Because it, you can trace its root to what happened in Egypt. In Exodus chapter 12, from verse 11 to 12, Exodus 12, from verse 11 to 12, the Bible said clearly it was taken at night. That's why it was called the Passover meal. Passover meal. And God said clearly, I will be visiting Egypt tonight. Oh, you may say that's just Old Testament. Well, how about checking John chapter 13? And you can read it from verse 1 to 30. Enjoy the reading. John chapter 13. But you will see clearly they are written in verse 30. Behold, it was night. Bible doesn't waste words. Oh, there are some of my friends, some of my colleagues, who probably know the Bible much more than I do, who said, sir, you are taking this thing too far. Anybody could eat the Holy Communion anytime. I said, no problem, no argument. One thing I would love you to do for me, because I'm addicted to the Bible, one thing I would love you to do for me is show me one example in the Bible when it was eaten and it was day. It was in the morning. And they couldn't find one. Behold, it was night. That's important. That's why I've always advised my children, you go to a wedding in the morning and they say they are uh, serving Holy Communion. When they come to you, beg to be excused. If they say why, tell them you are fasting. When do you begin the fast? Uh, just before they brought the Holy Communion to you. How is it to be taken? Worthily. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 33, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 33, he says, wait for others. 
He said, if you are hungry, eat at home. You must not come to the Holy Communion service so hungry that you want to take your own before the others arrive. If they are coming, wait for them. There's nothing in the Bible that was put there just for decoration. It's for information. And you follow this information correctly, you will get the results you are supposed to get. Wait for the others. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 29, is a very crucial part. He said, some people eat this thing on what they lay, not discerning the body of Christ. What does that mean? You must eat the Holy Communion only with members of the body of Christ. And the body of Christ, as you know very well, means the church of God. Ephesians 1, from verse 22 to 28, uh, 22 to 23, rather. First, Ephesians 1, from verse 22 to 23. Anyone who is not born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, a member of the church of God, not denomination now, don't partake of the Holy Communion with them. Because if someone is claiming to be a Christian and is not born again, is not washed in the blood of the Lamb, is not a brand new creature, he could be a member of a secret society drinking the cup of Satan and then coming to drink the cup of God. The Bible made it clear you can't do it This is not a question of you being holier than somebody is. Ah, that's not what we're talking about. We are saying, are you part of the body of Christ washed in the, in the blood, bought by the blood of the Lamb? Have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ? Have you said, I do? to the great bridegroom. Have you made up your mind that God helping you, you will serve Jesus and Jesus alone? If the answer to any of these questions is no, then you are not allowed to come to the table of the Lord. And if we decide to come to the table of the Lord, then those who are born again are free to say, sorry, we abstain. If I can't stop you, then I don't have to eat with you. It is a critical matter. The Holy Communion is a covenant meal. It's a meal eaten by those who have 100% surrender their life to Jesus Christ who have no other gods other than Jesus. If you are 100% convinced you are born again, you are washed in the blood of the Lamb, if Jesus arrives today by the grace of God you are going with him, ah, you are welcome. If not, tonight, as the Holy Communion is being served, take permission to go to the toilet until they have finished the meal. The meal 
Et au lieu de communier un mail, et c'est secret de mail, you take it correctly, you can uproot sickness, uproot disease, chase out demons. You take it wrongfully, it can make you sick, it can even kill. So if you are listening to me tonight, and you have been taking Holy Communion unworthily, I pray that the Almighty God will forgive you. But don't do it again. If you are not yet born again, right now, if you surrender your life to Jesus Christ, he will wash you with his blood. He will give you a brand new beginning, and then you'll be free to come to the table of the Lord. So anyone listening to me that's not yet born again, and you want to be where you are, please bow your heads, cry to the almighty Jesus Christ, and tell him, Lord, I surrender my life to you. I want to be part of the body of Christ. I want to be one of your bride. Please, Lord, save my soul. Let your blood wash me clean. And please let the rest of us intercede for all these people who are surrendering their life to Jesus Christ now. Let us pray that God will give them genuine salvation. Let's pray that God will forgive them of every sin they have ever committed in the past. Let us pray that the Almighty God will give them a brand new beginning. Let us pray that they will become part of the bride of Jesus Christ. Let's intercede for them for just one minute. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My Father, my God, once again, I want to thank you for your word, and I want to thank you for all those who are genuinely surrendering their lives to you today. Please receive them. Amen. Let your blood wash away their sins. Amen. Write their names in the book of life. Amen. Please, today, let them become part of your bride. Amen. And I pray that from now on, when they cry to you, you will answer them. Amen. Thank you, my Father and my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Now, for those of us who are already children of God, please take note that the Bible says you must discern the body of Christ. Discerning the body of Christ that you are already a part of means there must be no bitterness of any type between you and another member of the body of Christ. So before you come to the table of the Lord, make sure that if anyone who is a Christian who is a part of the body of Christ, has offended you. You forgive from the bottom of your heart. And as soon as we finish tonight, phone the fellow and tell the fellow, I've forgiven you. Otherwise, the Holy Communion might work contrary to your well-being. Now, as we approach the table of the Lord tonight, as soon as you take the bread, your prayer will be that every plant that my father had not planted in my system be uprooted immediately. When you drink the wine, you are going to cry to the Almighty God and say, by the blood of the Lamb, anything demonic that may be in my system be wiped out tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Father, we lay your mighty hands on these elements, 
saturate and to the mighty. If you participate, let the miracles begin to take place. And Father, my God, I'm using the elements here as a point of contact for all the elements that will be used tonight all over the world. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that your special anointing will come into these elements Amen. so that as we partake, the miracles that are supposed to follow will follow immediately. Amen. So that at the end of the Holy Communion tonight, there will be miraculous healing, Amen. miraculous deliverance, Amen. so that your name will be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus, the very night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. every plant that God has not planted in you be uprooted right now. And whatever wasn't in you when God created man, be removed now from the root. Thank you, Father. Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had sobbed, saying, This cup is my blood of the New Testament shed for you. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father Amen. and of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you drink, you cry to the Almighty God, everything demonic in my system, get out now. Thank you, Father. Everything of demonic nature. 
Open in my system. Wherever you may be hiding, get out now. Lord, speak against you, Satan. Ramoshe kete indere magakato rondere mokoshante. Kake ramokoshi ke rondere magakato indere mokoshi tere mokoto. Raki ke tol rondere magashe ke rende ke mokoto nda. Man ke mokoshi ke rende re mokoro ke re mokoshi tete magata. Thank you, Father. Ramoko tondre remoko ronde remoko shike tendre ke remaka tande. Eke ke ronde remoko ronde ke remoko shike rene ke moko shaka tanda. Thank you forever. Ramoko ronde remaka shike kende. Remoko tondre remaka katondre remoko tondre remaka karomo. Shikende re moko tunda ramaka shanta. Moko runde kere moko runde kere moko shiketa moko tunda. Manke kende re moko runde ramaka shinde. Thank you, my Father. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So, my Father, my God, I want to thank you once again for counting us worthy you, to dine with you. Thank you for the blood that bought us. Thank you for the stripes that brought us healing. Thank you for the power in the blood to overcome Satan. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm in total agreement with all your children all over the world today that every plant you have not planted in any of them be rooted up in Jesus' name. Amen. Every jam, every virus, whatever may be their name, Lord God Almighty, I decree that they be rooted out now. Amen. And Father, I'm praying that if there's anything of demonic nature hiding or hibernating in any of their systems, this very day, I decree that they all be thrown out. Amen. I decree total healing for your children. Amen. I decree millions of testimonies Amen. so that the world will hear and they know that you are the almighty God. Amen. And once again, we, your children, are in one accord. Thanking you for the miracles you have already wrought in our midst since this plague called coronavirus started. We are grateful, Lord. Thank you for preservation. Amen. Now we are crying to you for the rest of the world. We are asking, Lord, that in judgment, you please remember mercy. Amen. Have mercy on the whole world. Amen. And put an end to this plague. Amen. And do it very soon, Daddy. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.